So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at the Calia Art Ego Demonstrator Fountain Pen. This is a $10 or so Chinese made fountain pen. Falls under that larger category of Chinese fountain pens. You know, like the Wing Suns and stuff like that of the world. And uh, it's a pretty solid buy, has a good reputation online, and uh, it's easy to find. Again, takes uh, a week or two to get to you, costs about $10, and it's a pretty good comparison for some of the nicer Wing Suns, as, long as, as well as something like the uh, Twisby Eco, and we'll get into that in a minute. As for the pen itself, it's fully plastic, or a polycarbonate, whatever you want to call it. It's a demonstrator, so you can see what's going on in here. It has a piston filler, just like the Eco and a bunch of the Wing Suns, and very slim on other features. Screw top, so you can see the clear section with a clear feed, which is nice. I'm using a uh, Pilot Conpecky ink, which is a, uh, a blue ink, so clear feed looks blue with the blue ink. Uh, here you can see the feed, nicely saturated, and then the ink reservoir. It's fairly large. I haven't measured it yet, but uh, definitely a good size. Piston filler. See the two seals there. Piston mechanism, and then the turn uh, area up top to uh, move the piston up and down. It's almost identical to the Twisby Eco. Nib on the small side. It says uh, Iridium Point and then Kali Arts right there. Some very light scroll work. The nib definitely looks on the cheap side. It's definitely not one of the highlights of the pen. And when you see what sort of costs were cut, uh, the nib looks to be, at least aesthetically, one of them. Similar to the Eco, you can see there's like kind of a weird saturation here. It looks like the pen is gonna leak. It hasn't leaked at all for me yet but it does look a little bit messy. Cap is very utilitarian. Uh, there's no sort of blind cap or anything in there. No finial to speak of. So you can definitely see some ink collection at the top. Uh, has this really cheap looking clip. That kind of is what it is. You know, it works, it does the job well, but it's, it's just like too high here and too upturned towards the end. Just not very attractive, but it is a metal clip and it does do what's intended. Screw cap, works well. There's no touching over here. So any link, any ink that had to get down into this area uh, would just be sort of leaking or a drop probably from after I recently filled it. And once it's in there, I would guess it's not really coming out unless you're doing a really thorough clean. This is, uh, you can see the screw work in there, but this really doesn't want to come off. I, I mean, I guess it can come off. And then uh, you can't get inside though. All you could do is move the clip around. Not that you'd want to, but I guess that's how the clip was installed. And then again, no finial or anything up there. Very simple. Uh, this does not have a lock mechanism. You just push it down, put it in your ink, pull it up, and there's no click or any sort of lock there. I know some of the wing songs do have that. This pen does not post. It just sort of like sticks on here a little bit, but it definitely uh, doesn't post the way, and then doesn't go down past here. So there's no lock, it just goes on like that. And you wouldn't want to put it on there anyway. So if you were to twist it at all, you'd be twisting the uh, piston mechanism. So not a posting pen. One of the cooler things with this pen is that for $10, you do get this little carrying case. Not that it's like a, too fancy, but as a metal case, you get a spare feed in black in case you don't want to use the clear one anymore. You get a spare nib, which is definitely a bonus. And that is, uh, again, another fine nib. I'm sorry, this is the extra fine nib. So I bought the pen in a fine and I guess you get a free extra fine. Super cool, I didn't look at that that closely. Then inside here, you get uh, a little tool and this is if you want to take the pen apart. You can uh, take apart the fountain pen mechanism with this. I haven't done that yet, uh, but I'm guessing you just unscrew this and then use the uh, tool to open it up and pull the piston out of there. And then you also have two little 
O-rings. And uh, I think those are the uh, O-rings right here. They're red or orange here, and they would be clear if you switched it. But again, I haven't done that yet. It's a little, it's not a booklet. That's just an insert, and it's just a picture of the pen, but in a blue body instead of a clear one, inexplicably. So uh, that about covers the pen itself. Uh, from a comfort standpoint, it has a, uh, a nice section. It is circular, it's not triangular. So uh, if you've grown really accustomed to the Twisby with a more uh, angled section, this isn't gonna be for you, but it's maybe a little bit on the small side, but it does the job, no complaints. As for the nib and how it writes, uh, this did not come to me in ideal writing condition. Uh, it was smooth enough, but the ink was super, like the nib was super dry. So it would be missing a lot of upstrokes like that. And that's exacerbated because I'm left-handed, but in order to get a good line, I had to put a lot of pressure down, which uh, is really not what I'm looking for from a fountain pen. And even now, uh, you see, with no pressure, there's no ink at all comes down here. And that's fine. That's not always the best indicator. It is a fine nib, and maybe it's just not a very wet fine. And with very light pressure, you get a little bit of ink, but it tends to run really dry out of the factory and uh, not want to write unless I'm putting down a, a fair bit of pressure. Not a lot, not a huge amount, but more than you'd want from a typical fountain pen. You know, if you're gonna put down a fair bit of pressure, then just go with a roller ball or something like that. And you could see here where I was writing really lightly before it uh, has a fair bit of skipping when you're just kind of scribbling like that or taking really fast notes. What I've been doing to combat that is uh, trying to spread out those tines a little bit. This is not always the most ideal operation because you can, uh, obviously you, you can bend a nib and make it uh, broken or out of alignment or just wetter than you wanted. So you have to be really delicate here but with some work and some pushing up, you can uh, get it to be a little better. At this point, it's totally acceptable. It's the Caldia Art Ego. Ego. Now I'm just scribbling. But, and now it's actually fine and I don't have any real problem with it. It's not the smoothest pen. Definitely not the smoothest pen. And uh, it writes fine, I would say bordering on good, but uh, I'm not in any way blown away by how this writes. And this again is in the fine, not the extra fine. The extra fine I'll probably cover in a separate video and I'll do the change, I'll do the extra fine writing and the whole thing. But at this point, it's a little bit on the dry side and requires more pressure than I would like. So uh, I'm gonna have to play around with it. It's probably about a, I don't know, 50% chance that what I do when I'm playing with it makes it worse, but uh, for $10, maybe I'm willing to take that risk rather than have a pen I just don't like. You can see there is some collection of garbage up here, and I think that just has to do with the fit in between the, the section and nib piece and the body. I think it's, it's not leaking, it just it looks like there's some junk over there. I don't know if that's plastic debris or, or what, but uh, kind of comes with the territory when you have a cheaper fountain pen. Then a uh, quick comparison between the Cali Arts Ego and the Eco. Uh, first of all, obviously the name, it's <laughs> Eco and Ego. It's uh, hard to say these pens aren't related when they had basically the same name. But you can see aesthetically they're very close. Uh, piston fillers, double seal on there. Both are demonstrators. And then things like this right here, those little... Time, uh, whatever those are called, those little struts inside there, same struts in here. The uh, piston mechanism looks almost the same. The Eco does have some nicer features, like a cap band, no cap band here. Eco has that little red finial there, nothing here. Eco has a really nice looking clip. Here you have a stainless steel clip like the Eco, but it's uh, just this sort of bent Metal does not look very elegant at all. And then the Eco does have a 
rubber stopper here, which will allow you to post the pen. Eco also is just the, the plastic or the polycarbonate, whatever you wanna call it, is heavier and feels nicer. It's fine on the Ego, but it doesn't have that same sort of heft or weight to it. And it, that's probably just the fact that the plastic is uh, just a little bit thicker on each of the walls and probably polished or smooth a little bit nicer on the Twisby. The Kali Arts is basically the same materials, but doesn't have the same level of sophistication as the Eco. The uh, Eco also has the uh, angled, it's a hexagon cap and hexagon end piece with a circular uh, middle piece. Here you have all circles, or I guess that's technically a cone, but you get the point. So that said, this is $30, this is $10, so understandable that there's gonna be a big difference between the two. Uh, so at the end of the day, I like the Cali Arts Ego, but uh, if you're looking for an affordable Chinese pen, it's probably not the one I would recommend. It gets the job done, and it's a pretty good substitute for the Twisby, as long as you're looking at the Twisby in a fine or extra fine. Obviously, this only sells in fine, extra fine. It doesn't go into a, a medium or a broad, like I tend to buy my Twisbys in. Uh, so if you're looking for a Twisby replica, the Eco is going to get you pretty close. I don't think it stands up to some of the Wing Suns, uh, but we'll cover that in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.